Hey everybody, it's Angie Atkinson and I'm here live with Kristen Darcy. Say hey, Kristen. Hi. <laughs> I love you. Love you too. Good <laughs> and to be with you. I'm so happy to have you and I'm sorry about last week when we kind of had a little hiccup, but here we are today, so yay. Um, well, we're blabbing, so that's yes. all that counts. <laughs> that's right. That's right. So Kristen is a divorce coach and she is a therapist. Yes, Kristen? No, I'm a life coach. Life coach. Okay. And I'm going to have her tell you a little bit about her practice right now. Go ahead, Kristen. So Angie, I'm so excited to be blabbing with you. I, you and I got connected because I would, I would read your things and, and you're so full of wisdom and support for women who are dealing with a high conflict personality or narcissistic borderline personality. And I would laugh out loud. And I think that's how we you and I got connected because I, <laughs> I would think send so. you a little note. Oh my God, I'm being my pants. <laughs> Leave me. I'm reading what you're writing. <sighs> but anyways, for um, for about over two decades, I've been working with women and couples going through infertility mm -hmm. and um, trying to create your family. You know, and uh, what unfortunately a lot of uh the trauma and heartbreak, mm -hmm. you know, that's the first time a marriage is facing those things. And right. unfortunately, some of the marriages didn't make it, you know, weren't making it through. So I would have a client who I was trying to, you know, help through navigating, uh, trying to conceive and create your family. But in the meantime, you know, their, their whole life was falling apart, the bottom fell apart. And so I would quietly work with women who were in the situation because the fertility um, trauma triggered, you know, their, their relationship change. Mm -hmm. Um, and then one day I just came out and put that on my business card. Uh, and I was at an event yeah. and one of the ladies that I, you know, was speaking to pointed to that on the card. So I decided that it was, it was time, you know, to include that as an offering. Yeah. And plus I had my, um, uh, own personal experience, uh, dealing with, uh, you know, a uh, a very high conflict divorce. So I have made it, you know, my passion and my study to learn yeah. as much as I can. And part of that was finding you. <laughs> That's awesome. And I know you help a lot of people yourself. So I'm very excited to see. And this is an area I think you have some more expertise than I do, especially with the divorcing part of it. I mean, I did get divorced in 1998 um, after a crazy marriage with a covert narcissist uh, that I thought I was crazy. When I finished it, uh, it took me it took me a long time to uh, to get out of that, and that's something that we we might discuss today as well is how to kind of find yourself again after you go through such a, a traumatic experience. You know, do you find yeah. that when it, when it comes to narcissists, do you find that you you're finding that your clients often realize as you're coaching them that they have been parented by a narcissist as well? Well, I think there's. Um, um, definitely a correlation with mm -hmm. the women that I see that yeah. are nurturing and that have a certain personality type. And yeah. Yeah. what is so amazing about that personality type is that they're so capable. Yes. That, almost that, always. Yeah. All, almost always. And you yeah. think that there's something um, instinctively wrong with you because mm -hmm. you were blindsided by right. this relationship. But yeah. in actuality, it's because of your power. It's because of who you were. And yeah. what ends up happening is that there's a breach of trust, right? Yes. Yes, absolutely. There's a huge, huge breach of trust. Mm -hmm. And the trust, the breach of trust happens with yourself. That's right. And that's, you stop such yourself. Hard, that's such a hard pill to swallow because, um, you know, you're maybe you're you have such a high level of integrity yeah. that you presume that you're mirroring in a relationship with someone who who's a high person of integrity yes and then there's all this pathological behavior that is manipulation or gaslighting that you begin to question you you begin to yes. question those intuitive powerful sorceress goddess energy That's feminine right. divine feminine energy yeah and then before you know it you're not who you are right that's right and so i think when um someone comes to me and we were i just had a client last week and she was in trial mm -hmm. and she was in trial and it was a visceration and it was really all about 
the cycle that this personality needs, which yeah. is the limelight, accula um, accolations, um, you know, uh, a feeding, if you yeah. will, of yeah. energy. That's really true. And so, and um, well, you speak so eloquently to this and there is a cycle. And I just, uh, you and I were talking about it. There's uh, the High Conflict Institute, which I love. And, and you know, when we had, when I had the divorcing intact, we talked about the BIF response and mm -hmm. you, you, you talk about that also with no contact in the BIF response. Yeah. But part of this relation, the article that I wrote about was times of high risk. Yes. And what I love about how they describe that is that during that times of high risk, mm -hmm. there's such chaos. Yes. And if you as the parent or if you as a woman who's moving away from this relationship, don't practice daily self-nurturing or self-grounding energetic self-grounding techniques yep. during these times of high uh, high risk i love that don't you times of I high do. risk and it's so true yeah and it follows a pattern it follows a pattern so there's a perceived or real narcissistic injury yep. right that happens yes. and, and you yep. might even not even know what that injury is right it, but it's in their little world. Yes. There is a perceived or a real injury. That's true. And then before you know it, boom, you or your children are in this time of high risk. That's right. And what can you do when you have those uncertain feelings during this time of high risk? And it's scary. And you have an organic reaction to this. Yes. Your body is doing exactly what it's supposed to be doing mm -hmm. in fight or flight, right? Right. And you know... Uh, post-traumatic stress disorder. So instead of going from zero to 10, your system is set that you go zero to a bajillion. Yes. <laughs> right? Yeah, that's right. And so, so what can you do right in that moment that you can say to yourself, this is the time of high risk. This is the time of high risk. And we know the cycle. It's plottable. Mm -hmm. And that gives you the certainty You'll yeah. never know what's going to happen during that time of high risk. Right, right. But what you can be certain about, it's going to come. And That's right. And it's going to be black, black, by, um, uh, back blow. Yes. So you won't know what that is, but you know mm -hmm. it's coming. Right. And, and then the cycle will start all over. Right. And and depending on your your particular narcissist, let's say, depending on who you're dealing with, you may, you know, if, if you're in a a situation where you're not being physically abused, which is most mostly who I deal with, and you are being mentally and emotionally abused, which is in some ways more pervasive than physical abuse because you can't see the scars walking down the street. You can't know what's what someone has done to people. And, and a lot of people who have experienced this tell me that they struggle with making decisions at all. You know, they can't even decide where to have dinner because they have just been through the ringer and they find themselves on this level. Well, anyway, so what I tell people is this, okay, first of all, mindfulness is, is really the, the, the best practice that you can use here. And that is to focus on this moment where you're at right now. Okay. Because it's so easy when, when you're dealing with this sort of abuse and even as you're going through a divorce, the abuse sometimes ramps up on the emotional level and the mental level, you know? Um, and then what happens is that it's so easy for you to get so caught up in it that you literally stop living your life. Right. Yes. And right. And so one of the things that I tell my clients and I tell people on my YouTube channel and everything else, you have to focus on right now, this moment. Okay. And so for example, you can look, you know, one of the techniques I teach is uh, like a, I think it's anyway, it's, it's, it's an eye movement thing. I'm, I'm, I'm the having yeah. enough coffee and the, the name is yeah. EFT. EFT, yeah. that's it. Yeah. And, uh, and it's so the, one of the most simple techniques you can do is just to find any rectangular square near you, even this screen here in front of us, and just follow the, you know, follow the four corners with your eyes around. And if you do that, and then you just don't focus on anything else but following those corners, it can bring you right back to the moment. And it can distract you from anything long enough to get your head around it. Okay. Because it's so easy for us to become overwhelmed with emotion and overwhelmed with, I'm not good enough. Something's wrong with me. Obviously I'm the problem. La la la. And, and, and 90, 
I don't know what percentage, but a lot of the time it's really not you. It's really someone, you know, a nar if you're dealing with a narcissist, the narcissist is almost always instigating, even if he, he or she will tell you, hey, it's you, it's not me, you're the problem. And they'll tell you that constantly throughout your relationship and you'll start to believe right. it, you know. And, and what I find is a lot of really intelligent people, women, even men, you know, who get involved with narcissists find themselves um, going, I'm so stupid. I can't believe I fell for that. I'm so much smarter than that. I know better. I know better. And you know what? We, I'm technically, I have quite a high IQ. You are very smart. We have all been in the situation where we have been affected by someone like this. That's why you and I talk about what we talk about because we have been affected right. by damaged people ourselves. So you know, I try to tell people it can happen to anybody. And in fact, narcissists don't go for ugly, stupid people. <laughs> you know, <laughs> they go for smart, beautiful people. And whether you think that will make them, that will make them, their image improve. Exactly. And so, so what I talk about is values because, um, you know, if you're coming from a place of integrity, if you're coming from a place of truthfulness, if you're coming from a place of loving kindness, mm -hmm. you're not going to expect the person that who is supposed to be the person who loves you yes. to be treating you in a way that is not mirroring you, that right. is not kind and loving. And right. there, it's it what it isn't in our some of us our makeup to be questioning all the time because that's not where you live you don't live in a place of of, of um duplicity right. you don't live in a place of con right you don't live in a place of alternative motive so that is so yes i live that too like how did i not see this and so many women say that yeah but how could you have known you know how how, how could you have known right you really can't i think i, think I want to go back for a minute and talk about another grounding technique oh, that, I I, that I use too, yes. uh, that I share. And so what is so amazing is that if you find yourself in that fight or flight, right? If you find yourself triggered, I use the word triggered and I use that word triggered in my family and I use that in my, my, my work. Yeah. So you know when you're triggered, right? Yes. Maybe you get flushed, excuse me, maybe you, your heart starts pounding. Maybe, you know, you feel like you just want to run away, whatever that is, you know, when you're triggered, right? Yeah, absolutely. And so no matter where you are, we're breathing. And mm -hmm. if you just go to your breath, because I know when I get triggered, my breath stops, you know, yes. and, and our breath is so powerful. So if you concentrate in taking three deep breaths mm -hmm. in and out, right then and there, you're flooding your organic body with all this, you know, oxygen and, and it, it'll give you a moment. You know yes, what I mean? It'll absolutely. give you that, um, a moment of clarity. Mm -hmm. And then if you look at your feet, oh. just look down at your shoes. That's a great idea. And, and notice three things about your shoes, mm -hmm. because what you're doing is you're grounding yourself mm -hmm. to mother earth. Yeah. I love and it. So, you know, maybe you look down and say, oh, Jesus, I, I need a man. I need a manny and a petty. <laughs> you know what I mean? Sometimes. <laughs> breathe in, breathe out three times, look at your feet and ask the divine light to shower you down through your earth, you know, through your, mm -hmm. your lotus flower, down over all your body. Just like if you were in a shower over your feet, down into your earth star, into mother earth, and then pull that energy back up through the mother earth to through your earth star through the bottom of your feet up up up, up. it takes two seconds up all it. the way through your body out again in your crown up into the divine you're mm -hmm. grounded you're connected yeah and then you can make choice then right. you can make choice and Absolutely. this is and and you know what how profound that is it's simple as making choices so going back to that awfulizing that mm -hmm. I have personally experienced, like, how could I have not seen this? How can I, how did this happen? Or how, how does this happen? You know, how, you know, the shock factor. Yeah. Well, here's a, here's something I remind myself where you are right today. Mm -hmm. Isn't you right in the present moment, you know, creating this, right? This is a creation from your past. These are your choices from your past. That's right. So right today, man, you're so powerful because you can relearn how you want to, you know, what's important to you. The two questions 
I encourage people is I, uh, what do I feel and what do I need? Yeah. Those are good questions. Yeah. What do I feel? Mm -hmm. Well, I feel really angry. And yeah. what do I need? I need, I need to walk or I need to whatever. Yeah. Or I yeah. feel sad. You know, mm -hmm. it's so it's powerful. It's powerful yeah. because we have to stop that chatter because we are so critical of ourselves. Yeah. That's so true. Yeah, it's really true. And you know what? I think that, first of all, let me just say this. I love your technique. The two that you mentioned, those are great. They're beautiful. I think they're great. Okay. <laughs> let me say this. Thank you. Absolutely. I, I hope that my viewers and, and well, we'll share this on, anyway, we'll share this on YouTube as well. So I think this will be very handy for people. Um, but yeah, I, I agree with you getting, you know, you find yourself like, like I, I talked about on, on Friday, dissociation, you can find yourself dissociating from your life in general, you know, and you find yourself um, putting, putting yourself in this place where you're just literally like in this little bubble somewhere behind your head almost. I, I don't know, you see, you kind of sometimes you feel like you're watching life out from a movie instead of from your eyes, you know, and, and you're not really there. You know what I'm talking right. about? No, yeah. I get it. And, it, yeah. and it's, it's, we're all energy, right? Yes, yes. And when you, when you're sad, when you're angry, mm -hmm. when you're heartbroken, when you're shattered, those are all really heavy, dense, energetic emotions. Yes. And so of course you're going to feel it. Of course you're going to be disassociated when you're in right. the state of grieving. But here's right. the key you need to get it out. Yes. You need to feel it mm -hmm. because if you shove that down, if you don't acknowledge those feelings, if they're going to get bigger and heavier and grosser, you know, if, yes. and that's not a judgment, but if you don't allow yourself that ugly cry, mm -hmm. that anger or whatever, it's just going to grow. It's going to fester. I agree. So when you have that feeling mm -hmm. that you're, you're not, you're going through the motions. Like mm -hmm. you're almost, you're almost feeling like you could be out of your body. Maybe, you know yeah. what I mean? Like that's yeah. not right. Yes. I, I really work with the angelic realm. I, I, you know, I was brought up very Catholic and, mm -hmm. and rely on, you know, that foundation, but Archangel Michael, he's that warrior angel. Mm -hmm. And all you have to do is ask. And you just say, you know what, Archangel Michael, can you just come and clear me of all these energies? Right. And and bring in the light for me. Yeah. Because what we forget is we're not alone. We feel isolated and alone. Right. But this great big universe, there's unseen angels that can help us. And you know what? Maybe that's just a technique that I use. But I swear to God, when I called in the angels and said, I need help, mm -hmm. Archangel Michael, help me clear this. You know, it does bring in this powerful energy of taking that away because you do walk in a fog. Sure. Absolutely. You, you walk through a fog. Yeah. You walk through. Yeah. And I think regardless of religion, you know, um, whether you're comfortable with angels or, you know, God or spirits or whatever you want to call it, you know, it could just simply be your intention. Okay. And yeah. I think for me, this is a thing that has been very helpful to me. Like, you know, when you intend something, when you decide, okay, you know what? this is what I'm having in my life, then you can, whatever energy you're putting out there is, is what energy you're bringing back. And I think with my, you know, the Archangel Michael or, you know, whatever you choose to reach out to, even if you just say, you know what, I don't know how to deal with this. So universe, God, whatever, I'm giving it up to you. And I'm right. going to expect that it's going to work out for the best, you know, and however you, you, Sorry. However, you choose to do that with your uh, particular belief, um, yeah belief system, right? Right. Right. And so here I have Kuan Yin sitting behind me. <laughs> yeah. She, you know, she's the goddess of compassion. Yes. And I think that is uh, the sentiment or intent that that we all need during yeah. these difficult times is com right. self compassion. And here's a kicker: compassion for the person who is doing the harm. Oh, yes. I've had this discussion. I agree. It's a good one. It's a hard one. You know, okay. I I am a work in progress with that. Mm -hmm. And one of the techniques I do is a friend of mine told me about this. 
and it's a saying, um, I'm sorry, please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so when, when you're in that high risk po point, mm -hmm. the more you whip yourself up, the more that whole energy is going to be whipped up. And yeah. so the sooner you can get yourself to that calm place and mm -hmm. say, I am going to send that person love. And at first you're like, hell no, you know, right. you, you're, it's your instinct to reach out in the same anger right. that you're getting or the same right. energy that you're getting. But yeah, I even, I even help my children when they're in a situation dealing with other people. Well, let's just send them love. Yeah. Yeah. And just say that I want, I'm sending that love or I'm, right. you know, we talk about love bombing, which I love your articles about love bombing. Thank you. And, and I talk about it in a different way. You know, yeah. if you can imagine that you have a snowball of love energy yeah, and, and physically just throw it at the person yeah. that you're like, I'm going to have this amazing love ball of mm -hmm. like, imagine it's glowing, whatever color and right. just throw that at them. Yeah. Woo. It feels so good. And Certainly. you're going to get that back, if that yeah. makes sense. So I want to I want to shift the love bomb from the from the love bomb that they do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, did you hear Michelle Obama, you know, when they go low, we go high? Oh yeah, I think I did hear that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I love that. And it's so yeah. I'm like, oh my God, that's so perfect when you're dealing with anybody who wants to bring you low. Yeah, that if you go high to that higher energy, and I hope it's not too woo woo, but mm -hmm. those are those are the things that really help me get through this. Yeah, you know, absolutely. not staying in that cycle, that cycle of right. hate. Right. Yeah. Choosing to get off the cycle. Yeah, and you know, I'll tell you something. Um, when I was in um college, and I met. I, I had some roommates and there was a really horrible toxic situation with one of them and um, they were actually a couple. I was renting the basement. It was a whole thing. Mm. It was bad. And then he, he had issues and anyway, they just, they split up. And after that um, I moved out shortly after because he was, he had become then um, mentally abusive to me and had started violating all of my privacy, going through my things when I was gone, all this. Right. Yeah. I was so angry. I, I, I went out, I got myself a new apartment. I thought life was great. I had all these good things going for me. And then, and I was finally in my, you know, my own space again, you know what I mean? And there was something that was causing me to just stay angry all the time. And I was like, oh my Oh, I was so mad and everything was terrible. And I was like, well, what is going on with me? Why? You know, life is good right now. Everything's good. What's the problem? Well, then literally, almost like a voice. I mean, I swear, I heard it audibly whispered in my ear and said, you have to forgive that guy. You know, and I was like, what? He doesn't deserve my forgiveness. He doesn't deserve it. And then I still, you know, I realized that that little voice was right. <laughs> so I, I, I started to write him a letter and I hand wrote it. Well, first of all, because this was like 1994 or something. But secondly, because, um, because for me, handwriting something like that is, I don't know, there's something else to it. it it's well, you know, what is so cool about handwriting? And I'm so glad you said, it. I don't want to interrupt your flow of your story. Sorry. Right. But when you actually write, mm -hmm. you're, you're crossing the bridge within your two hemispheres of your brain. Yes. And it's triggering the logical and the emotional side. So I'm an old school component of writing, you yes. know, writing, journaling every day. Yeah. Because you, unbeknownst to you, your intuition, your innate wisdom was saying yeah. to you, write it. Okay, so yeah. that's what happens. You bridge yeah. the a Magdalena and your side, you, you connect both sides because when you're angry and you're, it, it's an emotional side. Yes. So keep going. So you okay. wrote the letter. So I wrote the letter and I'm going to tell you what, I wrote the letter. Okay. <laughs> I said all the bad words I wanted to say. I said all the things I wanted to say. And I basically, I narrated what he had done and how it made me feel. And then at the very end of the letter, I said, you know what? I'm forgiving you. Not because I want to, but because I have to for my sake and it's not for your sake, da, 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 you know, and I felt really good about that. So then I signed it and I folded it up and I didn't even need to send it. I tore it up and threw it away because, um, and some people will burn theirs when I suggest yeah. this or they'll throw it in the, the ocean or whatever. Uh, but the idea is, you know, some people might actually want to send it. I didn't choose to send it because quite honestly, I didn't need to after I wrote it. Okay. Right. Um, well, when you do that exercise, it's really for you. 
you know, yes. it's, it's the clearing yes. for you. Okay, go ahead. Exactly. So literally almost as soon as I finished and I had torn it up and thrown it out, I thought, I feel better. And I literally felt better for from that that incident no longer was an issue for me after that and it was such an ongoing it had lasted months for me and so i suggest to a lot of my clients that they try this exercise because it helps them to release those confused angry feelings they have and a lot of times people don't even realize how angry they are because they've been so controlled so under the thumb i like to say right you know and they haven't had the opportunity to even remember who they are yet and so that's something that I found. And another thing uh, on, a, on a, well, on a similar note, uh, I did a video a while back called um, 103 things you no longer have to deal I with. Know, I know, yeah. I yeah. love that. Well, and what I found, one of my clients actually said to me, you know, I watched that video and I did that. I made a list of all the things I don't have to deal with anymore. And it really helped me. And I, so now I'm telling people, try that, right? You know, make this list. It's a great idea because it kind of gives you a, you know, a reality check because we tend to, especially when they're love bombing or hoovering and then trying to get you back, suck you back in, which they almost always do at some point and on some level. Um, right. That, you know, then you can take that and go, now, these are the things I had to deal with. I don't want to fall back into that. Life is better now. Even if life isn't perfect yet, life is always better when you're not being controlled and manipulated by some person who pretends to love you but doesn't because <laughs> they're not capable in my opinion right um, yeah so what well, i think they're it, not. there's 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 they're 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 incapable of this that kind of high conflict personality right. is incapable of empathy unless they do exactly. the work and that's that, right. i think that's what you and i are talking about it's taking responsibility for what you co-created right and then do the work on you yeah to create what you want. Yeah, because the fact is, no matter how much you want to, you cannot help another person if they don't want to be helped. Okay. And so if you're dealing with a, a toxic narcissist in any sort of relationship, you're going to find yourself banging your head against a brick wall a lot. And and quite honestly, you know, I banged my head against a brick wall until it was freaking bloody. And I do mean that metaphorically, of course. But um, I tried and tried and tried and tried. I did everything I could possibly do. And then I finally just had to go, okay, well, it's me or him at this right. point, you know, because that's exactly what you're dealing with. You're choosing whether to make your life good or his life good. <laughs> and, right. you know, so that's, I think. And what, here, and here's the kicker. That person's personality doesn't allow them to try to make your life better. That's they right. They do things in a way that you think they are. Right. But in actuality, if you step back and see how, you know, you know, pop out and look down on the situation that it really has nothing to do with you. <laughs> that's right. That's right. And that's, oh, sorry. And that's another reason that coaches like yourself and like me can really help people through this because we can kind of be that third party perspective that is interested, but not involved. And I think sometimes you need that. Your mom's not going to be able to do it for you. Your best friend's not going to be able to do it for you because they're interested, but involved, <laughs> you know? Right. And so right. It, it tends and, to, and I, I think for you and for uh, for me, mm -hmm. I mean, we've had personal experience and professional yes. experience, but we're the arm's length. Exactly. Um, can I just circle back to something about when you were talking about forgiveness? Yes. Um, there's a woman, uh, Dolores Canning, I think mm -hmm. Cannon is her name, and she is phenomenal. I watched something about from her about forgiveness and karma. Huh? And I started using a little bit, like I paraphrased what she was doing, but I want to give her credit. Mm -hmm. And basically, you know, we are, we have this physical body, but if you can imagine, we have an emotional body and yes. then we have a spiritual body. So if you can I imagine know. like we're representing in this, this form, which our physicalness, but we have a spiritual mm -hmm. body and an emotional body. And so what ends up happening is that you're energetically connected right you energetically have these yes. contracts you know <laughs> either verbally when you say i take you as my husband or you have a right. contract that you're living together or you're creating a life right. and so i started using this clearing statement after hearing her because she said the two most important things are forgiveness and mm -hmm. karma not creating bad yeah. karma you know and I and agree. how do you do yeah. that you know and it was profound because the clearing statement, I don't have it right in front of me, but I'm pretty sure it went like this. Enough is enough. 
this is done. You go your way. I go my way. I forgive you. I tear up the contract and we're done. Enough is enough. And when I do that uh, exercise within my groups and literally have in the, in their mind's eyes, tear up the contract. You know, some people have a physical reaction, a a shaking or a release, but it really is saying, I honor you and I honor me and we're done. And just like you said, intention, you're setting the intention that we will, you know, no, do no harm anymore. You know, we're just done. And, and it's so powerful. And I think that is such a way to get your power back. Yes. Because you have given your power to the situation and then you're beating yourself up because of the situation. But if you simply say it in a way like enough is enough. You go your way. I go my way. Yep. Our contract is done. Yeah. I, I, that's, forgive. That's, I like it. I think that's so important. And it's, it seems, you know, a lot of people, because they struggle with the anger so much, because they, they, they're they going to be like, they don't know what they're talking about, you know. But the fact is, nobody wants to spend their whole life miserable. And that's exactly, I tell people, you know what, by continuing to let this person hurt you, by continuing to focus on the pain that they've put you through, what you're doing is you're still letting them control you from over there, okay? And so now... Well, one of this, one of this uh, a client I had, she was seeing a counselor, and the counselor said, well, you've been divorced for so long, but he still controls your house. Yes, <laughs> that's exactly right. Yeah. So that's the question you need to ask. Who's controlling your house? You know, exactly. <laughs> who, that's right. Who, and it's not, it's not in a way of, um, it's like, and you are in control. You have yeah. to control your house. That's right. So I didn't mean to cut you out. So I'm sorry. Go ahead. You just triggered (laughs) that thought. (laughs) Yeah. Well, no, that's a really good, that's a good thought because that's really the truth. And that's the same, you know, right along the same lines because, you know, whether there are children involved or not, you know, when, when there are children involved, obviously you still have to deal with that person up to a point. Mm -hmm. And yes, and that's a painful thing sometimes. But I know you were mentioning something to me about one of your clients who was dealing with an issue like this, um, where, where you find you struggle with the kids they they struggle with the kids they find themselves bad people narcissists will put nothing not even their own children in the clear space of (laughs) they'll use anything including their children to manipulate and and hurt you and so that I, i hear from a lot of my clients as well that you know that you know they took my child or they you know one one of my clients is dealing with a horrible situation where her child was actually taken by um dfs and it's it's a really or dcf Child Protective Services, CPS, because um, her narcissist, well, her husband actually died um, by suicide, and she found him, and weeks later, her narcissistic mother called CPS on her while they, her children were at her mother's house. They came in. Her house was trashed because she was mourning, and... <laughs> It was a horrible situation and they took her kids and she still doesn't have them. And now they're trying to terminate her rights and she's been doing everything she was asked and et cetera, et cetera. It's a messy situation and it's not fair. And I don't no. even know, you know what I'm saying? And so this is part of the reason that it's so important for you to learn how to manage your emotions and, and grow um, yourself again. And then sometimes because like in situations like hers or, or, People, a lot of my clients find that they, they don't even always realize it until after we, you know, discuss their childhood, but sometimes they find out that, oh my gosh, my, my mother or my father was a narcissist. And then they, they realize that, that, that they have been continuing that to cope in that way. in the same way, which is basically to stick their head in the sand or to just tolerate it. And, and, and then some big, huge, you know, they, the final showdown to, type thing happens where they realize, oh my God, I can't believe I'm, you know, and in this particular in this situation. Yeah. Well, I think, so. I think you're spot on about that. And I think that there, that goes back to, um, self-worth but mm-hmm. and self-work. And yes. I think if you go back to the family of origin, right. There is issues within the family of origin often. Yeah. That, there's no boundaries that right feelings 
feelings were not acknowledged or there was no psychological safety. There was um, no validation. Yes. And Huge. in some cases, you know, uh, um, you know, abuse, physical yes. abuse and sexual yeah. abuse. Yeah. So, so is there a pattern? Yes. And, and do you have the power to break that pattern? Yes. 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 But that is a horrific situation for that woman. It is. What ends up happening is that the system isn't educated. That's right. About what, uh, what emotional abuse is or what, or, or how this traumatic abuse looks like. Yeah. I, England, I'm pretty sure it was England who just passed a law about emotional abuse being a felony. They did. Criminal charge. About time. And (laughs) About time. And yeah. I, we're a long way from that. There's right. so many brilliant people fighting for that. Yes. Because the system isn't equipped to deal with someone who comes off charismatic. Someone mm-hmm. comes off forceful. Yeah. Someone comes off slanderous. Yes. Someone comes off with lies. Right. That they don't, because on paper, they present in a certain way that yep. they can snowball. And That's then- right. The financial component, these are usually very successful people in a position of power because that personality um, does well in this yeah. world, right? Yeah, yeah. And so then you have a woman who, or a man who is in a vulnerable position who gets steamrolled by the system and then right. you're fighting, you're fighting that system. Right. I feel very badly for that woman. And if you want to give me, you know, to share with her, um, you know, I, I would love to gift her some product or something to help yeah. her during this time yeah. because um, talk about that violation. If you oh truly, God. if that mother truly was concerned about her daughter, wouldn't she have shown up and cleaned the house and got her food and, and, and gently taken yeah. care of her as opposed to calling the authorities and taking her children away? So right then and there, if you're a logical person and educated in narcissistic behavior, then right. you would say, what kind of mother would do this? You know? <laughs> yes. Yes. Totally. It's it's such a painful. And I feel, you know, I wish I could just shake that woman and tell her, you know, be a better mother, <laughs> you know, and be there for your daughter and everything. I don't know, I'm not I'm not talking about my client. I'm talking about her mother, obviously. Um, yes, yes. You know, she simply used her husband the woman's husband's suicide to manipulate and do, you know, literally ruin her life, take away her family, the rest of it that she had left, and their family, the children's family. Now the children have been ripped out of the home and one child's in some other state with a father that he didn't grow up with and the other child is with the grandmother the one who took the kids in the first place so it's a messy messy horrible situation and I just feel really terrible for her so in fact I think she may come uh on with me at some point and do um when she's ready she she wants to advocate for parents in her situation. So I I told her I would help her when she's ready. Well, you and I can have a private conversation. There's some organizations, some people that I can send you that will help her. Thank you. Because there's, you know, lost mothers, you know, there's a lot of organization, a lot of um, support out there for her. Good. Because I definitely, it's, it's it's heartbreaking. It's just not. So I think, I think in closing, you know, we, we really are, um, need to educate women and men Mm -hmm. about this situation. We need to empower ourselves with, you know, strong boundaries and, and, um, you know, knowing what you need and, and, and allowing that intuitive voice. Like you said, you, you heard that voice. Yeah. Forgive me. Yeah. (laughs) They're, they're all, the universe is always talking to us, support us. And that's right. And how do we open up to that? That's fair. Very so I, I love you. I love what you're doing. I love how you do it. I, you're so approachable. You're so, um, an expert uh, about this. And I, I'm so, I'm so grateful that we connected. Me too. I love you too. You have been nothing but amazing as far as I'm concerned. And I think you, you're so good for people to hear you. Your energy is beautiful. It's full of all this light. You know what I'm saying? And you can't really, really, I always think that every time I speak with you, I think, wow, she's just full of light. And I just love that. I think it's such a positive well, look. I'm getting goosebumps just talking about it. Uh, <laughs> what, do I, what of our state, what of our um, 
things I always say in our house came from a good friend of mine who actually went through her ordeal before me, you know, and I looked at her and I said, oh gosh, I hope that it never happens to me. And then within a year after it was. Oh. And so she and I used to say to each other, sparkle up. Oh, I love that. Sparkle up. Sparkle, sparkle up. up. I love it. Don't let anybody <laughs> take your sparkle. And she would yes. call me or I would call her. And, and when you, on those days when you don't have your sparkle, you know, yeah. when you feel like you're dimming your light because of the yes. circumstances, yeah. I wrote it on a big piece of paper, sparkle up I because love it you have your light and you shine bright. Yeah. So I love that. That is a great way for us to end this today. Thank you so much. Sparkle up. Okay. Sparkle up. Okay. We'll talk soon. I'd, I'd love to have you back again, or I can come over on your channel again. We can work out. It. All right. Okay. Talk to you Bye, soon, everybody. Kristen. Thank you. Thank Bye everybody. You. All right. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. See if I can end this here. Ah. <laughs> okay. <laughs>